Every small town has their fair share of local legends. They don't really travel past the borders of the town, and most certainly never end up on the internet. Ironic, considering I'm recording this now. But the locals can tell them by heart. I've heard a lot of them in my time as a truck driver, but none of them actually held any truth to them. Except for one. The story of the ghoul. I heard it when I was travelling through South Dakota. I had stopped driving for the night, as I was just too damn tired, and it was so humid out that my windshield started to fog up. I'd ended up in some tiny town called Aberage, about an hour from Custer and three hours from where I needed to drop my shipment. When I say it was tiny, I mean it. There were about 15 buildings total. Most of them were houses. The remainder were a sole restaurant with a bar attached, one church, and a gas station. I didn't exactly trust the restaurant's quality, but I was starving. So, I figured that I'd at least sit at the bar and order some sliders, if they had them. The door jingled as I walked in, and a mostly empty dining room greeted me. There were three people total in the building, from what I saw. There was the bartender, a bold bearded man who immediately gave me a quizzical look. The only other person at the bar was a young woman, who was drinking a labelless beer, and didn't even turn her head to look at me when I sat down. I was clearly the outlier here. I wasn't exactly welcome, and I felt it. Still, I picked up a menu, and tapped the beer that I wanted. When I took my first sip, she finally spoke. I haven't seen you before. Her voice was equal parts rough and soothing. I was startled, but I pride myself on being polite. So I turned to face her, and tried to make small talk. I'm not from around here. I'm just passing through. I figured. What brings you in here? The appetite of a fucking horse, that's what. I've been on the road for 11 hours. She giggled. She wasn't bad looking, but wasn't exactly my type either. So I hoped she wouldn't confuse my jokes as flirting. You're funny. I turned away for a moment to signal for another beer, then looked back at her. I have my moments, at least. She looked at the bartender as he passed me my second pour, and waited for him to take my order before she signaled to him. Rico, should we do it? He grunted and walked into the kitchen. She seemed to take that as a yes, and excitedly looked at me. We've got a tradition around here. Everyone who drinks at the bar has to tell a story. It's nothing crazy, but we only have 23 people living here, so we're always itching to hear something new. I'm not a very interesting person, all things considered. He would think I had some crazy stories after traveling around the country. But I never really left the road long enough to see stuff like that. Still, I wanted to put on a good show. So I decided to tell them a story about the first time I saw the ocean. As I munched on my onion rings, I tried to make it as fantastical as possible. And, admittedly, embellished the details a bit. I'd never actually seen a killer whale before, 
but they didn't need to know that. By the looks of it, the woman was captivated with the story, and sat there the whole time with her chin in her hands and her bright eyes trained on mine. I finished spinning my tail and turned back to face the bar, placing a twenty on the counter as a tip. I was about to say goodbye when the woman halted me, with a slight smirk on her face. You got a good speaking voice. Thanks for telling us your story. We want to tell you one too. I was dead tired, but my manners prevented me from refusing. So, I smiled and signaled to her to continue. It's the same one I tell everyone who comes through here. Because it's the one that sticks with you the longest. I nearly jumped out of my chair when the bartender finally spoke. It wasn't even directed at me, but it caught me off guard. The one about the ghoul again. Yes, sir. Unless you got a better idea. He remained silent. She looked at me and began her story. The ghoul was a local ghost story about something that haunted people who passed through the town. It was a long, pale figure that would only speak one word at a time. It would start haunting someone once they heard its story, and wouldn't stop until they were dead. I sat there, relatively entertained as she described the ways that the ghoul would make people go missing but I obviously wasn't buying it. But you want to know how you can be sure that the ghoul is after you? How's that? It makes you see stuff, man. Stuff that isn't really there. It'll make you see it. Feel like it's real. To me, this story just sounded like a bad drug trip or an excuse to get me to stay in town. I was blinking in and out of consciousness when she finally finished, and decided I'd head back to the motel before she decided that story time would continue. Well, I'm gonna call it a night. You folks have a good one. She stopped smiling and just blankly stared at me. I got up and walked towards the door pushing it open with my foot. Hey, one question before you go. I sighed and turned around. I just wanted to go to bed. Yeah, what's up? You can see us, right? I wasn't sure if I'd heard her wrong, but what I'd heard was a weird-ass question indeed. Who was us? Her and the bartender? Of course I could see them. They were right there. She was starting to creep me out. Um, yeah. She took a sip of her drink and looked at the bartender, before turning back towards me. Well, good night. My brow furrowed, and I walked out the door. Whatever was going on with that woman, I wanted no part of it. She'd been pretty nice up to that point too. I have no idea where all of that suddenly came from. I wasn't exactly in the mood to ponder on it further, so I began walking down the street towards the motel. As I walked, I thought about the story she told me. Why was that the story she told to people who passed through her town? Some sort of scare-you-into-staying tactic, I guessed. Maybe. I wasn't too sure. I unlocked the door to my room, and after brushing my teeth, tucked in for the night. I woke up to a knock on the door. I rubbed my eyes and groaned. 
I didn't feel well rested at all. I rolled over and grabbed my phone off the bedside table, squinting as the bright light hit my eyes. Ah, it was free in the morning. What someone could want at this hour, I had no idea. But I wasn't about to entertain it. I put my phone back and shut my eyes, hoping that whoever it was would just go away. The second knock jolted out whatever grogginess I had left in my system. It was much louder than the last one. Like someone had slapped the palm of their hand onto the door. I jumped out of the bed and laid on the floor, hoping they wouldn't try the handle. I had to get to the door and lay against it. Whatever unsavory character was trying to open it was still pounding, and I didn't have confidence that the shitty motel door would hold. I crawled on my hands and knees to the other side of the room, as my bare back pressed against the cool, scratched wood. The pounding suddenly stopped. I was horrified that I would hear the handle turn, or feel the door give out from behind me after a kick. But none of that happened. Instead, I hear shuffling from behind the door, which gave way to a single word, breaking the silence. Open. It was no louder than a whisper, but in the deafening silence, I heard it clearly. My heart sank, and I tried to process what I'd just heard. It didn't sound like anyone I knew, obviously, but it also didn't really sound either male or female. I tried my best not to move, and held my breath. Please... Open. Every hushed word pumped a dose of adrenaline directly into my system. Whoever was out there was either sincerely in need of help, or trying to coax me to open the door so they could do god knows what. I had to stay put. If I went to grab my phone, I was afraid that the door would fly open and I'd have to face whoever it was. I sat there for what felt like hours, as I was starting to fall asleep again, much to my dismay. I heard footsteps walking away from the door. I inched away from the door as they got quieter, and was almost at the bedside table when I looked up. The bathroom door, which was open before I went to bed, was now closed. I froze, unsure of what to do. When the pounding started from the other side of that door, I shot up, grabbed my phone and keys, and sprinted towards the bedroom door. As I flung the door open, I heard heavy footsteps not far behind me, along with the familiar voice. No. It kept repeating it so calmly, following behind me. I bolted down the stairs, running through the parking lot, towards my truck. As I jumped into the driver's seat, I felt something hit the floor. I didn't want to turn, I didn't want to look, but I did. Standing outside of my door was a twisted face. The eyes were the size of baseballs, and were peeled open, fixed directly on me. The mouth hung open, as if the jaw couldn't close at all. It didn't have a nose, or ears, or any other features on its face. We sat, looking at each other for what was most likely seconds, but may as well have been eons without moving its gaping mouth. It spoke. See me. By this point, I'd pieced together what was happening, 
and jammed the keys into the ignition. I floored it onto the road, and didn't breathe until the town was nothing but a faint light in the distance. I was exhausted, and could barely keep my eyes open. I yawned and slapped myself on the cheek, in an attempt to wake myself up but I could feel myself drifting off. But I was feeling something else too. A sense of dread, right in the pit of my stomach. Taking my eyes off the road, I cautiously turned my head to the left. It was still there. Its head was directly centered in my window now, smiling at me. I swallowed the urge to scream, and looked back at the road. It couldn't get in, and couldn't affect me, if I didn't look at it. But what it could do was talk, in its low, haunting voice, punctuated with guttural growling. You see... Me. It repeated that for hours. I'd almost forgotten what silence was like by the time the sun rose. As the dawn broke, and the light began to fill my eyes once again, it went quiet, and only the sound of my tires traversing the bumpy road remained. I looked to the left and saw the trees through my window. Nothing was blocking it anymore. I arrived in Dupree shortly after, and didn't even help the factory workers unload the shipment. I just sat in the driver's seat, smoking a cigarette and thinking to myself. When someone knocked on my window, I nearly had a heart attack. It was the factory supervisor who called to sign off on the product. Are you doing okay? A couple of my guys said you didn't look so hot. I cleared my throat and put my cigarette out in the ashtray. I looked over at him and managed to smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm alright. Long night though. Barely got any sleep. Had to leave at 3am. Three in the morning? Huh. How far away were you that you just now got here? I opened the door and stepped out onto the gravel, holding my clipboard. It felt good to make small talk after what I'd been through. I was up in Aberage. An odd little town, for sure. Aberage? I've never even heard of it. I looked at him. Expecting him to be kidding me. His brow was furrowed, and he looked concerned for me, if anything. I pulled out my phone and showed him my delivery tracking app, which had marked where I'd stopped for the night. It's right about here. He looked away from the phone, and back at me, with serious concern on his face now. I've been hunting out there. There's nothing there but woods for miles. <laughs>